Hello and welcome to the Wrecking Crew Bomber with crew members from the Wrecking Crew uh, Armour 3 group. Just get a bit of everyone involved. Right, uh, we're up for our first mission. The first mission is on the 1st December 1943. It's the earliest date I could choose. It is for Brest Harbour. Um, secondary is Brest Harbour. Brest U-boat base, not Brest Harbour. Uh, no tertiary target, so we can select one ourselves if we want. Uh, target of opportunity. Ordnance selected six times, 500 pounds general purpose, and 12 times, 100 pounds incendiary. Should be good fun. Although I don't know how much use it is against a harboured target, being that it's near water. Uh, distance to furthest target, which is actually Brest Harbour, is 772 miles. Fighter escort is two squadrons of P-47, so that makes... 24 P-47s in total. Uh, flat strength at the primary target is moderate. Fighter strength is minimal. There are actually no fighters that cover the breast area, so we should be pretty fighter free, but flak is still really harmful. Priority medium. Uh, Germans are getting quite a lot of transport from here. So target intelligence. Breast harbour is used to transport some materials and personnel important to the German war effort in that local area. Striking the port would disrupt communications and supply as well as, an, as affecting local morale and support for the Germans. I'm sure those French boys really want to help the Germans there. Secondary target, uh, Brest Uber base. Um, I doubt we'll need to attack it. It is the first mission. They do tend to give us a bit of a milk run. Uh, flak strength, again, is moderate. It's the exact same area. They're right next to each other, as you'll see. Uh, fight strength is minimum. Priority is medium. Damage is none so far. This is damage that us or other bomb groups has done. Uh, so the intelligence. Brest is one of the bases that German U-boats return to between war patrols. U-boats represent the biggest danger to Allied shipping and results in tying up large numbers of ships as convoy escorts. So, probably be going for that at some point. Uh, so they get you to sign at the bottom of the page. Some some kind of signature there. And let's... Alright, let's have a look next at the reconnaissance film, just so we know what we're looking for. This is more for you guys than it is for me. So this is coming from the other direction that we'll be flying from. We'll be flying on from north to east. Uh, she wears that. I think it's uh, east to west. We'll find out. The map changes orientation depending on what direction you're flying, so it can be very hard to get, get your bearings. But yeah, that's the target. Lots of flak, as you can see. That's the reel over. Uh, route map we'll have a look at once we get inside the plane. So let's go to that. Right, here we are. Here's the plane. Part of the 447th Bomb Group with the nice yellow cowlings and the blue insignia, uh, as well as the square K. Uh, just kind of don't worry about the backwards K. The tail uses the same skin either way. So, whilst the pilot team of Sarge. No hands, Weatherby and Conrad Weibo Saxon get the engine started. We will go to the nose where we will find Hartley Deadeye Wilson looking through the bomb site already. Don't know what he expects to see. And Chris, up his north Bosnator, as our navigator, will be making sure that we're going the right direction, although I don't have much faith. Uh, Bombay, you can see the incendiary and the bomb load here. Uh, you can also see a bit of Gruzy. This is as much as Gruzy will probably see unless we need him. Uh, because I can't control where we are in the in the bomber. Uh, so, hello Gruzy's knee. We'll probably pay, play as him quite a lot because the top turret is very useful. Back down from the bomb bay, you have the radio operator's room. You have Dennis Scramble Sherrington on the radio. He will fill in for any gun rolls when people get injured or the cheek uh, cheek gun if needed back down to the waist we have Philip Duff Zerksosen Zerksosen oh, I don't know how to say that uh, yeah that was very difficult <laughs> he's in the bull turret uh, you can see him here visually you wouldn't in real life uh, just so you can click on him then have Rick German Burnham Harris on the 
port waste gun. Uh, Thomas Lefty Crab. Changed my nickname because mine was a bit too normal. It still is a bit too normal, but I couldn't think of one good before I started recording this. I'm on the port. Sorry, Rick is on starboard. And then back in the tail, we have two tool. Two tool Harrison. He'll be protecting the rear of the plane. So, we are now ready. The rest of the bomb group is ready. We're going to go taxi and take off. Here we are with the pilot team of Sarge and Weibo, Weibo Boy Saxon, lining up on the runway. They'll do their final checks, as you can see on the rudder, do it on the ailerons and elevators. They might have already done those, might have missed those. Cows are open. You are cleared for taking. And they're taking off. And we're up, wheels up, flaps, should be coming up any second now. Yeah, they're making their way up, slowly but surely. I'm pretty sure, yep. <laughs> Thought I was going a bit mad there. Second bomber's lining up, and they'll be taking off. As the formation is forming up, I was supposed to show you the map, whilst this always glitches out. Um, so we can get the best mission plan done that we can. We want it to be as short as possible, losing as less fuel as possible, whilst getting ourselves in the um, out of danger as much as possible. So these big blue thick lines is the range of enemy cover. So we'll be trying to move this a bit more away so they don't make any lunging attacks. Um, the red areas is where flak buildup is. The redder the line is, and the thicker it is, the heavier the flak, as well as these blue dots are extremely heavy flak emplacements uh, surround, uh, because there's an airfield. So we'll be trying to avoid those as much as possible, as, you know, if you fly over an airfield with Germans on them, they're going to come up and meet you. That's not something we're going to have to worry about today. I'm going to place down my target opportunity, just in case. We shouldn't need it. I've just placed it on, I believe that's Sherberg, yeah, Sherberg Air Base. Put that over there. Should hamper their, their fighter ability. So, what we're going to do, we're going to move some of these around. This is the, this is the decision point where I'll be making the decision about which target to go for. I'm going to be just dodging areas here. I'm trying to get in as quickly as possible less flak as possible, so there we go. Then, drag it over here, get out the flak as quickly as possible. Drag that over there. Now we have the shortest route with the quick in, quick out flak. And because we're also coming side on from the river, we should be able to get a good profile on the harbour as well. Um, these waypoints default to 15,000 feet, which is too low for a B-17. Uh, the flak will get you easily, so we'll just increase those. About 25,000, that's my go-to number. Not too high, not too low, just about right. And we'll change our numbers depending on how the flak is, and in future how the enemy fighters are doing. It helps to kind of deceive them sometimes with how low or how high you are coming into a target. So that's that. Right. I'll get back to you again when the formation has formed up and we're over the English coast. So here we are, over the English coast. Now, time to go over the big load of water, straight over to Brest. Shouldn't have too much problem. Got a nice formation here. So, 
Come back to you when we're near the target and the action begins. There we go. Hartley Dello Wilson is doing a little jiggy dance, getting ready for his bomb run. He's going to need all the luck he gets. It is very, very cloudy. Both targets are going to be cloud over. Going from first target to second target is not going to do us too much good. Might end up having to go for our tertiary target. Uh, not tertiary, uh, target of opportunity. But that does mean we have to take on German opposition. Which no one's prepared for on their first mission. So we'll try and grab one of these. See what weather forecast says. Let's go to Dennis. Let's request primary target weather. Stormy. Not good. Bose is pointing out boobs. Secondary target weather report is five tenths. How can they be when they're right next to each other? Okay. Let's see what um, Hartley is looking at. Nothing. <laughs> By the looks of it. Let's see if there's a break in the cloud somewhere. Some over here. If not, we might have to go around, go for the secondary, which we don't really want to do. More time spent in the air is more time to get shot down. We might even have to drop down a couple of thousand feet to try and get the visibility that we want. Okay, now Hartley's doing really well here. Gonna take over from him for a second. He's got it pretty much bang on on target. Oh, and the flak's coming. Just gonna pull the drift over a bit. 1.6 degrees. Oh, more flak now. It's a scary sight. Still nothing. Oh, someone got hit. Can't tell who it is though. Just look for some damage. Oh, Sarge. Sarge took a bit of shrapnel to the face. Right, let's go back to Hartley. Still on target, just see it through the clouds. Bring this back down just a tiny bit. A bit of quick adjustment. There we go. That should be absolutely fine. Just gotta keep that going. As long as everyone stays alive. Once the two pieces of cork line up. We get a red light, then an amber light, then automatically bombs away. Don't have to adjust any of the settings. We're good as we are. They've already adjusted altitude before we get to the target. The Lord takes care of the rest. Take a flak through the bomb site. Those should be ready to give the next coordinates, next bearing, and get out of here. There we go, bombs away. There they go. Now we'll take a look at the target, ignore the shrapnel sounds, that just happens. So this is the harbour that we've just hopefully bombed. We'll wait, there they are. Very, very nicely done. 
Well done, Hartley. Now it's the pilot's job to get us back. I'm gonna get Ghosty to drop us a couple of thousand meters just until we get out of this flak. I've descended like three or four times, that's okay. The more the merrier. Take a look at the damage we've received. Oh, bomb for out, bomber out of formation. They've also lost the bomber up on the high squadron. We haven't lost one on the low, uh, on our squadron yet, and there's none on the low. Friendly fighters coming in. They're escorting us just in case. So far, I don't think we've really taken any hits. There's one single one down here. One there by the chin. Luckily, it didn't hit uh, Hartley. One on the tail. Luckily, it didn't hit too tall. And we're all good. Hopefully, we'll stay unscathed. We're flying underneath the flak now, so less likely to get hit. Lightning out. Almost out. So nearly that the Germans are still trying. That's it. We're out of the flak zone. Friendly fighters have just joined us. We are free to head back. See Brest Harbour on fire. So, uh, let's keep going. Formish formation's descending. And I'll see you if anything happened. If not, I'll see you orbiting the base. Well, I thought I'd be here if something happened, and something did happen. Dennis is taking care of Saxon. Saxon decided to drink too much whiskey on the job and pass out. Hopefully his wounds wasn't too big. And uh, can join us for the next mission, but we'll see what happens. So, we'll continue on, and I'll stop again if anything's happened. And here we are. Back in Blighty, uh, formation is breaking off, going to land back at our airfield, which I think is Thurley, uh, in the Midlands. Breaking off now. We're going to orbit, and I will see you just before we land. Orbit and wait for landing clearance. Well, I stupidly forgot to grab the ending, uh, but with the limited damage that we had, we would have landed safe and sound anyway. Uh, it's more interesting when the bombers are damaged. So, flew uh, 720 miles, we attacked the Brest Harbour, we know the mission date. No fighter shot down because we didn't see any. Uh, bomb damage estimate was moderate. Interesting for the amount of, amount of buildings we took out, but uh, that's okay. Uh, yeah, no confirmed losses either, no confirmed kills, that's okay, as long as we didn't lose anyone. Saxon had a flesh wound, so he was just drinking and burnt his hand on something. That was our line of attack, and those were our bomb hits. Pretty good for a, a stormy 10 tenths, 5,000 feet cloud coverage, uh, Hartley did very well, so hopefully you should be doing good with that. 
And Saxon for his flesh wound got a purple heart. That's very sweet of them. Right, so the crew continue on and we will see you on mission two.